Welcome to the Amazon Legends Podcast, where we have real stories about making it big on Amazon. Our guests are CEOs of large companies and entrepreneurs who became powerful sellers, also experts specializing in helping sellers, and both former and current Amazon employees who will give us an insight from behind the scenes. Here's your host, Nick Urison. Welcome to another episode of Amazon Legends. My next guest today has spent over a decade with global brands such as Adidas and Marvel. And uh, he's currently the founder of Marknology, which is a full service Amazon agency. And when he is not working, he is traveling, he's a passionate traveler. And while he's traveling, his focus is music and artists. So uh, it's not all about work. So with that, uh, everybody meet my guest, Drew Morgans. Uh, welcome to the show, Drew. Nick, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to uh, cut it up with you for the next hour or so and, and hopefully bring some value. Oh, yeah, I have no doubt with your background. And by the way, when you work with Marvel uh, brand, were they doing the movies already or not? They were, but what you start to realize at the high level is that there's a whole bunch of subsidiaries, right? Like, you know, you've got the accessories lines, you've got the clothing lines, you've got the movies, you've got the studios. So it's not all the same team. I was a little disappointed in my uh, in my un- understanding of how these things go. But uh, yeah, same same company. And uh, we got to play with Spider-Man and, and a lot of things like that. It was fun. Yeah, cool. Okay. So talking about Amazon, so when we've connected, we discussed a little bit and, you know, in my world, you know, I, I happen to be in data and, and Amazon is a data driven operation. It's everything is process data algorithms and uh, AI these days also. So, but you came from a totally different perspective and you said success on Amazon starts with something that, that I haven't heard put in that context so tell us what that is emotional content so emotional being obviously you're referring to the listings right yes and no Mm. (laughs) so tell us a little bit about you know what you mean and then let's get into that because it's very interesting that you actually can turn what's on a web page into emotional stuff yeah uh so I think that's just the deeper level. I just keep getting deeper and deeper with like, you know, my learnings, like uh, like anybody else is trying to be the best at what they do. I think you start out understanding that content just means, you know, posts on social media or uh, case studies or an article written by you on LinkedIn or um, <clears throat> assets like images or video. And then I think you learn like, okay, I'm not just putting out content now, or I'm not just creating content. There's different types of content. And uh, for me, like the emotional content thing is about creating e- emotionally evoking content with your images, with your videos, with your tweets, wherever you are, really, uh, we're specifically talking to Amazon, but it's about creating uh, content that makes you feel something good or bad. That makes you creating content that makes you feel something. So, okay, in the con- in the context of selling on Amazon. What are some feelings that lead to purchase? Okay, let's let's use a, uh, a simple example. Let's say we're selling um, a baby onesie. Okay, like a, a onesie, which is like, a, you know, clothing for a, a newborn baby. Uh, most of the time, you know, we think about a potential customer there, they could be the mother or the father could be a sibling, an older sibling buying for a younger sibling. It could be a grandparent, could be an aunt and uncle. Anyone could be buying for a baby, but nine times out of 10, it's a gift. Okay. Uh, and even if it's not a gift, um, we're selling to the person buying for the baby, not the baby itself. Okay. In this particular instance. So what you can do with the main photo is you could just have the the onesie displayed in the first photo just spread out taken on a white background photo or you can create a photo with maybe a very cute baby okay or maybe even a crying baby either one could work right and what you're going to see um is that one photo 
you're like, okay, the, the outfit's cute or it has the design I want or I like how it looks, maybe. Uh, in the other photo, a lot of times you're picturing your nephew, you're picturing your niece, you're picturing your little one, you're picturing uh, um, uh, an item that you can envision whoever you're buying it for because you connect with the photo and you see something, you feel something, you feel connected to it. And then what happens after that is the logical brain says, okay, why should I buy this? Is it reviews? Is it price point? Is it design? Is it availability, et cetera? But at first, if we want to go to the deepest level, we create photos or content, not just for the sake of creating it, but for the sake of making them feel something whenever their eyes come across it. You know, this is, this is a very interesting point that, you know, one would never think about this when you're thinking about listings. But um, I was talking to another guest just uh, about pictures, what kind of pictures. And he shared some statistics with us in terms of mm. what converts better. And he was telling me that if you put a human element in the picture together with the product, the conversion rate goes way, way up. Yes. And the example he was giving me was they were he was talking about also as it happens the toy that the, the seller was selling a, a sword so they just put a hand holding the sword not even a person but put the hand holding the sword and it just increased the conversions you just mentioned not just the onesie but a baby maybe crying baby so yeah uh, so the what I'm seeing is when you put a human element in a picture, you are basically driving whoever is looking at it to imagine them somehow using it or somehow connecting with it. And that's you're, what it is, right? You're exactly right, because you can get so deep with this. You know, it can be the difference in um, an African-American being in the photo, a Caucasian being in the photo, an Asian-American being in the photo, the different ethnicities matter uh, and not necessarily on Amazon where we get to choose that. But in a perfect world, we would advertise to me, someone that looks like me, to you, someone that looks like you or your niece. You know, you're getting it exactly right. Uh, everyone wants to see themselves uh, or at least it converts the best whenever they're able to see themselves or the person they're buying for in that product. And so if you can get that segmented with your ads, it, it can really lead to a big difference. I wouldn't say that it's just human though. Like for example, great food photography, okay? A lot of times never has the human in it. Um, and then you started seeing this with supplements and different food products on Amazon where they've got the main box uh, photo of the product or the food of the product or the pet supplement. And then you see like the textured, delicious looking, uh, you know, maybe sprinkled down by the box or like, you know, exploding out of the box or something fun like that, um, which also makes you think delicious. So it makes you feel the emotion of, ah, that looks delicious or that's nostalgic or, or you know, whatever it could create. For me, uh, it's a funny thing when it's not our baby, uh, at least with children. I think a lot of us kind of chuckle when we see a kid get hurt or trip and fall or start laughing and crying about something silly. So that's kind of why I brought that up. Even like a crying baby it doesn't just have to be a cute, you know, passive baby. If you're scrolling and you just see this baby, like, you know, crying, um, you know, it will, it might make you stop and pay attention as well. So uh, it's not just the human element, but it definitely is that relatability element that we're looking for uh, where someone feels something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh... It's the, I mean, they are ultimately what you said at the beginning, they are connecting with it, right? So that's the idea. Of course, people connect not because of what they hear, because of what they feel. Yes, sir. So uh, that, that uh, the feeling of connect, connecting is what you want to uh, get going. So there is something else. Uh, that I do with my clients and I want to see your take on it. Um, I don't know if it would be part of emotional aspect, but uh, what I always advocate for is using some kind of an image theme in the pictures. Image theme is nothing to do with your, your product. All it is, it's something, it's almost like a, uh, it's not your logo, 
uh, it's something that sits in the corner uh, that is like a consistent a seal of approval kind of thing it could be part of the the theme of the product for example i had a client a long time ago uh, he was selling supplements the supplements were primarily positioned for crossfit people and uh, he had one supplement with cherries in it and others so what we did we put uh, a bunch of cherries on the side and the capsules together mm. and then we created different versions of it throughout his product pictures like for example for use cases you would see a, a, a lady in the gym and then you would see cherries like dangling you know on the side along the side of the the uh, photo but most important imagine a, 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 the bottle of a supplement product on the search results page on its own and and this product picture of the, the the bottle of the supplement but with an image theme the click through rate for first of all it it stands out right so it stands out so what is your take on this first of all would you would you do something uh, how do you feel about this and and uh, and does it is it an emotional kind of connection is it making so what we're trying to do is we're trying to in an instant create trust Okay, uh, in just a brief passing moment, uh, create trust with the, with a potential customer. One, we need them to engage with it. So something that catches their attention, and then you're trying to build trust. There's different flows to the to the human brain and the human uh, customer buying behavior. You know, like uh, for one, I would consider it like a consistent theme. Or for me, we just call that branding, uh, where uh, you can change between products and change between images, and it still has the same look and feel and vibe you know for lack of a better word um you know this has existed outside of amazon for a very long time um where you know you go into a certain department store or retail store and they have a certain music playing or they have a certain color uh you know the best ones in the world have a certain color why because uh blue makes you buy or green makes you buy and red makes you uh you know uncomfortable and you leave it makes you anxious um you know i'm 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 making some of that up in regards to those colors but i knew i know that there's certain colors that make people uh more open to buy and so the right stores are thinking are all the way down to thinking about the right colors in which they're doing things and creating that environment the music is upbeat makes you want to move around makes you want to buy make decisions versus making you feel lethargic in that store. Uh, maybe you stay in there. Um, so these kinds of things really have just been, I've been studying them to repurpose them for Amazon um, in a way to take stuff to the next level. So what I noticed was on Amazon, as the industry has grown, there were certain people out in front setting the tone and the pace for what good listings look like. Um, but considering it was mainly pioneered by private label, um you know uh private label brands really were the ones pushing on amazon to do all the new innovative things and it's been the big retailers that have been the slowest well the private label guys well one they they made successful listings just by doing giveaways and getting reviews and then that went away and then they had to start caring about seo and ranking and then some of those super url strategies went away and then yeah. it became down to like how do you create the best converting pages out there? And so uh, what I really saw was an international talent base, you know, in the Philippines and India and Pakistan and across the world start copying the best in the space. Okay. So they started copying uh, listings. It became very descriptive. Like uh, this is the value points. This is what it does. This is before and after almost like a, a template over and over and over and uh, that was just easy for me to notice, okay? So I'm an American, I've traveled the world uh, growing up abroad and lots of things, I've, I've seen lots of cultures. I understand that in America, uh, localized wise, localization wise, um, we care about being sold to. We like the emotional like sell to me, like, you know, versus if you're in Germany, it's like, give me the facts, give me the details right away. I don't, don't waste my time. I wanna know what I'm buying, right? Well, the American culture, we like to be sold to we like ads we like good marketing we like good branding we like our influencers our celebrities our heroes and so if you can create content uh in my opinion uh you could create content that was 
branded, consistent across the images and the A plus and the video all has the same vibe, the same feel. Um, and if you can take it to this point where it's even like right from the search results, making them feel something like, oh, I want to check this out. Then we've already had a leg up on anyone that's not uh, not doing this, uh, you know, for Chinese sellers that for the longest time for private label was the biggest competitor for because for private label, most of them are getting it from China. China's getting it cheaper because they're making it there. They start selling and all of a sudden you're out of luck. Well, how do you stand out? You create this content that um, other cultures have a really hard time replicating if they're not living here in the US, in my opinion, in the Western culture. So it was a way to really differentiate yourself as an American seller uh, with quality and trust uh, in an emerging marketplace. And I know that was a mouthful, but I kind of wanted to get out kind of why I started like evolving and started caring about this um, as things go, because it was a way to just very easily say, you know, if I care this much about my images and my content and my branding, you, you know, it's almost like you can assume that I care about the quality of the product as well. And, you know, as an American customer, you're going to get a quality product. So I'll pause there. Um, but yes, I definitely believe in branded, consistent content, uh, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you made a very uh, interesting point where, you know, I didn't actually, I haven't heard this before, but if you go on Amazon today, and especially with the new tweaks Amazon made, Amazon shows the flag of the country, of the seller. So you can see if it's a Chinese company or a, an American company. So what you are highlighting here is if you pay attention to your content, your product picture, especially your main product picture, you read that's one way for you to differentiate yourself from the, the Chinese sellers that are hard to compete against. So that's that's a differentiator right there. Not to mention you're gonna get a higher click-through rate on your search results. Uh, and then when they land on the page, if you are carrying that theme through in terms of putting premium on your content, you're gonna convert higher. I mean, that's just another benefit, right? Correct. I mean, it's, it's, it's fully so, loaded. It seems like a no-brainer. Yeah, but, you know, people don't think about it like that. So the first time, I mean, look, I've done so many episodes at this point, and it's close to 100, and first time it's coming up like this. It's, and that's, it's and that's, one way to differentiate yourself. That's why I'm winning, Nick. That's why I'm winning and uh, why I'm pushing this message, this messaging. I want people to know that Marknology is doing it first. Everyone else is copying us. And, uh, you know, we're pushing the pace to be the best agency in the world at what we do. I want people to know instead of before I would just work so hard, uh, you know, and people are just copying my listings as the brands come out and they look good. And um, you know, I've been doing this 11 years. And uh, now I'm, I'm getting on podcasts, I'm doing booths, I'm putting out marketing messaging. I want people to know that I'm doing this first. So when they go to look it up, they know uh, that the team is, you know, kind of pushing this new thought leadership, I guess. And uh, so it's not so easily copied without giving credit to the right team. So, you know, it's the data you talk, you led the, you started the conversation out with data. Um, and I'm telling you that everything I'm saying about investing in emotions and investing in content it is a sometimes a one-time investment into good images or good branding or good content, uh, but it, it affects your PPC. It affects your return rate if you're doing it well. It affects it affects absolutely everything in the algorithm because the higher your conversion rate, the more Amazon wants to show the product. And you know, it just it's it's amazing data whenever you're able to track it over time and, and just really see the results of of um, putting in putting in work. So, emotional content is the concept and one way to do it is with your product pictures and and you mentioned using something other than the product together with the product for people to connect with so they can see themselves using that product either for their own use or if it's a gift or if it's a, you know kids or whatever so they see something in it um, if it's a food product of course, again, it makes it more um, real. Uh, so the, how does this extend beyond pictures? And what about the rest of the content? So 
it, it's very great, great question. So one, um, you know, your advertising runs off the main photo, um, you know, but you can also do custom creative, you can do custom headline ads, you can do video ads. So let's not get too, you know, too black and white. It, it, there's some gray there where you can really affect your advertising engagement as well. Um, but it's the messaging in the photos. So don't just think of the objects in the photos, but think about text and copy and messaging that also creates emotion. Okay, so content is written as well as uh, visual. And, um, you know, so the content being, um, are you making a statement that creates an emotion, right? Are you, um, you know, you might say something that's like, ah, oh, that's funny, or that's clever. There's some cool, really cool brands out right now, like Ballsy is one that I uh, uh, was helping build before they had an exit Ballsy brand, or like the man's manscape brand or dude's wipes or Hero Clean, you know, all of these products are getting more niche. And uh, it was like men's hygiene products, right? Like men's uh, deodorant and, and body wash and things like that. And they took the humor approach. Um, mm. So, you know, it makes guys laugh. It makes them want to get the products. They get jokes with the stuff like men's ball wash and stuff like this. And, you know, that's a play. It doesn't always have to be like luxurious and premium and uh you know it can very much be like something that makes you laugh like a like a crying baby um and so you know as you dial in kind of who that customer is some of the things that i see that people are doing wrong okay would be uh i go from the bullet points to the product display images to the a plus and across all three different areas i see different pronouns being used I see, uh, are we buying it for your little girl? Are we selling it to the mom? Are we selling it to unicorn lovers? Uh, you know, at the A-plus page, it's a, it's a unicorn toy product. So we're talking to unicorn lovers in the A-plus page. We're talking to, she will love it. She will be the best, you know, journalist you've ever seen. She will, uh, you know, learn to write and read better uh, in the in the copy and then in the images it's you 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 talking to the mother you will you know you will love this gift for your daughter you uh you're going to be a better journalist so that's an example of like you know where the written word along with the images needs to be targeted okay and so what you're trying to create is is a, is emotional the images uh the visual is faster than the logic brain so you just see something and you feel something uh you sometimes don't even know why you feel it you just feel it and then then you start reading and that's the logic which is like this comes with 14 pieces and um this is going to give me more time with my daughter and i'm immediately going to be the best dad of the year because i'm getting her a unicorn gift and she loves unicorns and you know is is the is the um the father buying the gift the hero is the hero the daughter that's going to get the gift uh is the hero the the unicorn lover right so if we're confused with this we're sending confusing emotions right they they're reading it and they're like trying to make sense of the language and that's another reason why to me uh you know outsourced VAs um without a sharp team kind of making sure it's localized to each country they're selling in can be a struggle um, because you've got some creating images for products they've never bought before. Uh, they've never had, uh, you know, even the income to be able to purchase those items. Uh, they're writing with, you know, it can be a little bit off with the pronouns or trying to get too many search terms in there. And any American customer that's reading it is immediately, immediately consciously or subconsciously loses trust in the product when there's not cohesiveness across the whole thing. And this is like, these are very nuanced things. Okay. Very you know, very small changes, very nuanced differences, uh, but the difference can be uh, massive in conversion rate and and really right. dialing it in. So I know some of these yeah. are taking a little bit long to explain, but I want you to, I want any of our listeners to kind of get an example of what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So the what I've also heard you highlight here is at least this part stuck with me is it's one thing to have your product pictures in the best possible way you know that really great vivid emotionally connecting type pictures but they are supposed to be uh, streamlined with your copy your a plus pages so there has to be almost you almost have to so when i work with my clients we first storyboard the pictures so we create, okay, what will be the, the, the th theme running through these pictures? We're not going to just put up, okay, put this here, put that there. It's not, 
they have to be consistent. They'll be telling the story of the brand. Perfect. But what you are suggesting is that actually goes beyond just pictures. You have to storyboard your entire page content. That means your bullets, uh, pictures, and your A plus content from emotional connectivity standpoint. Correct. Like, let's say uh, the reason you see the, let's just use an example. You see a, a, a baby product, you see the baby onesie, uh, you see a cute baby that looks like your niece, um, you click on it, okay? And, and I'm going to be the uncle here that's buying. Let's say I'm the target customer. I'm the uncle that's buying. I click on it. Oh, my, she's going to love this one. My sister, who I'm really buying the gift for because it's for her baby, but I'm buying it for my sister so she doesn't rag me too much, right? So I'm buying it for my sister. Uh, I'm looking at the product in the, in the reviews. Sure. Okay. So I, I will eventually get to reviews once I've made my decision. But at first I clicked on it because it was a cute baby and a cute onesie. Okay. So I click on it. Well, then the photos, because at this point I'm now an uncle and if it was targeted towards me, the photos would then say, this is a perfect gift. Okay. Uh, it's going to be talking to me as the uncle, as if I'm getting a perfect gift and I'm going to be the uncle of the year and I'm going to make my sister happy and the baby's going to be comfortable. All of those things. I want to feel all of those things when I'm buying. Okay. So one, I'm, I'm getting a quality gift that my sister's not going to be like, he bought something cheap for me Two, It's actually going to be made with great materials that the baby's going to enjoy and love and be safe in bamboo or something like this. Nothing like chemical. Um, three, it's gift ready. That would be a perk, okay? If it was ready to go, it looks like it's good. It's not just in a poly bag. Maybe it comes in a, I can do the gift option or maybe it comes in a box that's retail ready or something like that. These are all the things I'm looking for as the uncle buying a gift for my sister. And I know it's getting a little technical in advance, but now the images, one, show me uh, maybe like a, um, a, uh, a baby shower party maybe it shows like this is a great gift and here's why it includes like uh da, da 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 maybe it's saying this is like organic and bamboo and like you know proving that not just saying it proving it making me feel that so all these things i wanted to feel even though i didn't know i wanted to feel them when i first clicked on that photo my logic wants to be sold these in the images right now i'm going to be like okay they say it's bamboo and organic let's see who they are and i start scrolling down I didn't even read the SEO. The SEO is just so it made it show up whenever I typed something in, right? So then I'm down to the A plus page and the A plus page might be about either the product. Uh, it might upsell me some other items I could get together with it that are gift ready, or it could tell me the story of the brand that I'm buying it from the brand story, who they are, you know, what it is. Um, as a marketer and an uncle, I like one, I want to be trendy. I want to get my niece cool stuff because that's kind of who I am. Boom, nothing is nothing is like I wanted to know who this company is because if they have a good brand story, I can immediately tell that they're like, you know, a company that cares. In my opinion, no one goes to that effort unless they're a company that cares. So I'm I'm feeling all these things. I'm feeling like they care. I feel like my sister's gonna love it. I feel like the baby's gonna be safe. I feel like I'm buying a quality gift. It's gonna be super easy for me, which is what I care about. And then I go down to the reviews. I'm reading the reviews and I'm making sure that some other customers, maybe like me, I'm looking for maybe another couple uncles in there. Okay. Like that are writing a review or something about a gift. It was a perfect gift or my sister loved it. Or like, you know, some, some validation from the reviews, maybe that like what I'm buying is, is the right thing. Because if anything, I don't have a baby, I'm buying for a baby. I don't know much about babies and I'm looking for a little bit of proof that I'm going to get the right gift. And that is like the flow of emotion uh, that happens. And, and, I, and I've been reading kind of about buyer behavior and studying these kinds of things um, from a mental health perspective and different things like that to understand that at first, very quickly, we have an emotional connection to something, uh, a sound, a smell, something we see. And then our brain goes to mode two, which is, okay, why did you feel that? Okay, is there anything, any check boxes that make you discredit or not trust the emotion that you felt originally? We go to prove it or disprove it immediately. And if we are proving it, proving it, proving it, trust is building, trust is building. I feel like I'm an idiot not to buy this product. Why would I look at any other product? I just got validated on everything I was feeling and now I'm ready to buy. And uh, that's kind of how I, how I think about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it's this is so to to break it down like that. Uh, it, 
again, another thing I picked up is reviews are key to get you ranked uh, organically and also obviously for conversion. But what I heard you mention is when you first see something in the search results, whether it's paid or organic, it came up in the search results, that emotional connection is key to having somebody click on it. So that's click through rate. Uh, yes. Then they are on the product page. When they land on the product page, what I heard you mention is reviews, they are just for confirmation. But when they first land, the dominating part is the pictures. But of course, everybody knows pictures are important, but it's the emotional connection that your pictures are able to establish instantly. And then it moves on to building the trust. So people emotionally connect with the product. You make them want to buy the product. And then you convince them by building trust. And then you confirm that this is the right thing to buy with the reviews. Reviews come right at the end. But is that the right way everything flows through? That's how it works for me. And there's... You know, there's different nuances between if you're selling different products, maybe the video plays a big part because it's an invention that you don't know how it works. And, you know, the video might really show how easy it is to set up or it's a com complicated gift to set up. And, and the video shows me how easy it is because I don't want to be the uncle that has to set it up if it takes me three hours. And, you know, there's different nuances to what we're selling, but you're exactly right. Um, and, and, you know, I think it's those things that make the difference in because uh, what we're selling is trust. We're trying to build a relationship as a brand with a customer in a matter of seconds. And we're trying to do it as fast as possible um, without them leaving and going, checking out other products or having a reason. Everyone's looking for a reason to say no. So you're looking to give them a reason to say yes. And, um, you know, so you're taking away all of those things. And to me, you know, Photoshopped images, it's not just that 3D rendered images are bad or Photoshopped images are bad or graphic graphically made images are bad everything doesn't have to be a lifestyle photo where she's actually out in the fields jumping around or it doesn't have to be like that okay but you need some authentic content mixed in with everything else it needs to be real it needs to feel real and I feel like the American customer can tell is this photoshopped it's just a hand or uh, a lot of time you know just a hand and uh, overimposed in this or it's the same photo and they're just changing the design of the kids outfit 10 times across the different styles or um that can still work and you can still sell in 2012 to 2016 you would have sold a ton but in 2022 it's more than that it's it's more than that you got to be better you got to be authentic try to create real content um and, and not everything is like a, a lifestyle photo with models and things like that another thing is uh a lot of times they'll have uh they're trying to be that you know diversify and they'll have uh you know, maybe like um, uh, an African-American, then they have like a white guy laughing and then they have like an old person laughing. And then like, you know, it's just like, there's no consistency. Who are you selling to? Is this for everyone? Cause I wanna feel like this is just for me. I wanna feel like this is the perfect product just for me or whoever I'm buying it from. Uh, if I can't tell who they're selling it to, these are all things that are happening I think subconsciously with the, we're a very advanced uh, American customer. So, so going on that, who are you selling to? So, I mean, people don't want to pigeonhole themselves into just one demographic. So how do you deal with it then? I think, I think one of it can be like, you know, um, it's okay to show me if I'm the one selling it. Uh, for example, or someone like similar like that, um, you know, it can be uh, create uh, photos that include multiple people at the same time versus just one person changing, uh, you know, it's it's more of a, a gray area than a black and white, I'll be honest, as far as like how to feel that. Um, but I can almost like feel that when I look at someone's images, if I'm like, I'm not exactly sure who this is for is this, uh, you know, I guess this is how I think about it. If I look at an image, and I don't know immediately uh, what the brand or the seller is trying to tell me in that photo. And they make me guess. I immediately am not trusting as much as I was before I saw the image. 
Okay, so I see the image. Let's say a lot of people like, uh, you know, in beauty or something like, let's say uh, I'm holding up a, an, an AirPod case. Uh, so this, let's use this as an example. And it's just like, it just shows it like this. Um, you know, the brand might have been trying to show how small it is or compact or slim or something. But, you know, one, I'm not going to read it if it's completely covered in text and it's like nothing stands out to me either. I'm like, I don't know what they want me to get from this. They're telling me it's as, it can go international and it's and it's small and it's slim and it's white and it's like, oh, my God, too much information. But, you know, one one great caption or one great word or one great sentence um, that says sleek, slim, compact design. Boom, everything in that message in that photo is now telling me when I saw that photo quickly, it's like, oh, it's super small. Or maybe it's comparative to something and it has the measurements, right? The next photo down says, um, you know, long lasting battery lasts for 48 hours of continual use. Okay, if they're just showing me like someone with headphones in that's like in the airplane trying to do a lifestyle photo with the AirPods in. I don't know what they're telling me with that photo. It's just a good photo. It's just a handsome person sitting in a plane with the AirPods in, you know, but if the messaging is super clear and if it's something that I typed in, so like, let's say I was typing in like noise canceling headphones. Okay. No, noise canceling uh, earbuds. And then I see in one of the images, noise canceling earbuds, because that was the research term that I came in on. Ooh, I just got validated and I just feel like, Ooh, good. This is exactly what I was looking for. Right. So if you know, if you know what keywords are driving your sales because you've been testing, because you're getting data, because you did your research, you know what what search terms are actually bringing in your traffic and bringing in sales. And then you've got the images and the and the and the text working together to help convince that person that just came in in a story type of way. As they go through the images, what that is in my mind, as you go from image one to image six, uh, as if they were reading all of the information in the bullet points in A+, they should be able to tell exactly what you're selling and why they should buy it, just with those six images. Yeah, so uh, that, that's a good uh, matchup of pictures against text, against emotional uh, content. So um, there is... Um, I'm trying to formulate a question for you uh, in terms of demographics. So, uh, but first, what, what you said is so important. Just putting pictures as use case or lifestyle images is not enough. You need to put words to tell people what that picture is trying to communicate. And then of course, make those somehow connect to the emotions that you want people to feel. So that's a key takeaway for me. Uh, so pictures combined with words where the message becomes crystal clear. Think about if it. You think, are looking I'm sorry, Nick, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to just suggest like a way of thinking about it is like one, you know, like a lot of the images on Amazon are very descriptive, like like comes with two comes with an extra case comes with this packaging lasts for 12 hours it's just a whole list of features right like yeah. how do i stand out as my product list of features and it's like you're showing them a magnifying glass of exactly what that is and then the other the other angle is make people look at your product almost like from binoculars okay which is like ooh that looks really cool they're looking through their binoculars and they're like i can kind of see what my life would be like if i had that product Right. If yeah. I had that product, I would be cool. I'm going to get the girls. I'm going to be able to like disconnect in the plane when the baby's crying. Like that's a feeling like, you know, I want to feel cool. I want to feel more prepared. I want to feel more equipped. And so that's kind of what you're trying to create with the photos is this like this wanting, this wanting, this feeling of the product. Like I will be the best uncle if I have that kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so what you're trying to do is with the pictures, trying to get them to imagine themselves using the product, right? That's the goal. So that they are, you, we are almost putting them in the picture using the product rather Correct. than if possible, trying to if, show them. If possible, we would show every time we served an ad, for example, we would show it to what, like someone that looks similar to them. 
right? It's why it's why like uh, you know uh, African Americans are so adamant about having themselves uh, you know in politics, in in Hollywood, in uh, representation, right? We all want representation. So if you're a great brand and you're a great marketer, you're a great advertiser, and we can be this specific now. It's not TV. It's like you know very targeted ads now, even on Amazon, off Amazon. If we can get so uh, segmented and so targeted to where um, if I'm a white redhead, I'm seeing another white redhead uh, on my ad. Oh my gosh, that connects with me even more. Like trust, trust yeah. me, I notice when I see redheads in marketing because it's rare. Okay, it's more rare. Uh, we're not the common average man. Uh, so whenever I see a redhead, I immediately notice it. It's immediately got my attention. That ad just just won if it was just trying to serve it to me, right? Um, so how do you, though, create that kind of uh, perception where, because a few minutes ago you mentioned, well, in one minute, in one picture, they have a white, uh, white uh, white guy on another picture uh, a black senior person on another picture a woman so i don't know who they are trying to sell so um, what happens if you're trying to sell to a large demographic so and then you have your, your those lifestyle pictures with uh, let's say an african american family on another picture maybe a, a, a an asian family another picture a, a white family so how do you so when so according to this, you don't. That's going to confuse people in terms of who is it that they're trying to sell. So, what's the best way to create that compilation? Good question. So, still figuring this out as we go. Uh, I'm an expert, but uh, I'm more of a legend than an expert. Okay, so that's why I'm on the show. <laughs> but um, you know, think about uh, the baby onesie as an example. And I'm just this is not pre-rehearsed. I'm just like spitballing with you. Okay, so think about the baby onesie where I'm the uncle. I'm buying it for my sister uh for for our new niece my new niece okay uh it might be that one of the photos has uh well one babies are way cuter than me okay so let's not sell to the uncle the whole time let's like lean into the baby being the cutest one just like having a dog in the photos you can just list all the products or let's put cute puppies in all these photos why wouldn't we do that everyone loves puppies so you know we're going to lead first with the baby being in the garment but we're going to message it as if to like uh, someone that's buying a gift and maybe I see uh, one photo where it's it's a guy, a male, a female, and a, and a baby, okay? And that could be interpreted as husband, wife, baby. That could be interpreted as, um, you know, brother, sister, baby. It could be interpreted as in, any number of things, like a family. Like, I'm, I'm trying to shake, show gift, and I can include a lot of different people in one photo with a gift photo I, in, in this example, right? Another one would be um, everyone's trying to do diversity, but, but sometimes by trying to appeal to all, you appeal to none, right? So it's that balance of like, do we actually care about all these other customers? Are grandmas really on Amazon? Do we know that? Uh, you know, are we trying to sell to, to Amazon? On TikTok, it's Gen Z. So it's it's anywhere from 15 to, you know, 40, I think, uh, is the age demographic. So let's appeal to that crowd. Uh, in the same way, like on Amazon or on Facebook or on LinkedIn, we're appealing to different customers. We market differently. You, As you get more data, you figure out who that customer is and you dial it in a little bit more, right? So I, I would say like the bad ones are just uh, blanketing it. They're just like, I want diversity. I want white, yellow, brown, pink, and green. You know, let's hit every color under the rainbow. Others are more intentionally like, what makes sense in normal life? in a normal life based on the product we're selling, it would be like uh, a tool that could be, uh, or let's say it's like a leather cleaner product. Okay, it's a leather cleaner product. It could be used on a baseball glove. It could be used in a car shop. It could be used in uh, inside a nice premium vehicle. It could be used on a nice handbag. So in each of those cases, you would get a good, a good way of showing uh, maybe a guy working in an automotive and then uh, a mother carrying the handbag. OK, so those ones would apply and be OK. In another one, if we were just using um, if we were just using the automotive reference, if we had uh, every like male, female, grandma, grandpa, everyone in this automotive product, that makes no sense. You know what I'm saying? Not to say that a grandpa can't be working there. It's more so just like who's probably buying that product. And let's think about selling to them. So. From strategic standpoint 
if you have a product that can truly be appealing to a, a fairly diverse set of you know demographics you would even go as far as excluding some for the purposes of staying focused in order to have a higher conversion so that they identify with it. Yeah, and in some cases, you don't even have to use humans. In some cases, you do not. Um, emotional content isn't just human-based, okay? Like like puppies, for example. We don't know if they're male or female, or we don't know. We're yeah. just like cute puppies. Or I'll let's give say... you a specific example. So, okay. so I'm working with a client right now. So I'm going to pick your brain. Okay. This is real-life uh, scenario. I'm sure it will apply to many others. So they sell a kid's product. It's an educational thing. So, uh, so it, it's designed for uh, uh, family experience together. So that family experience could be educational, could be for introducing them to, to different experiences and educating them on a different subject. So they've got three different pictures. And in one picture, they have an African-American family. In another picture, they have, you know, the white typical American family, uh, and then another picture, an Asian family. So because they don't want to leave anybody out, this is for all families and for their kids. So according to this, uh, it's really not focusing on anyone. So what is your take on this? Well, this is just opinion, Nick. Okay. So don't anybody roast me. But you know, the way I kind of think about it is like this. One, it should be assumed that it's for all families in this particular product. It should be assumed that it's for all families because why would it not be for certain families? Okay. So the assumed knowledge should be if it's good for this, this culture, it should be good for this culture. It's not like a Greek game or like a Jewish game or like, you know, it's just a game, an educational game, which is good for all. So in some cases, I think it could be where you even avoid uh, switching between OK, I think another instance would be, um, you know, there's a lot of brands. If you really look at um, like uh, Victoria's Secret or Vogue or Kith or like some of these streetwear brands, a lot of them have a model that they've stuck with for a long time. OK, and they like have built a brand around that person. So you recognize them. OK, so in some cases, I think just consistency between the photos if there's no reason to switch it, it's okay to have the same ethnicity in all of the photos, okay? Uh, a cool way of doing it might be to have a mixed family, okay? So most people are going this route to just go mixed family because it includes all of them uh, and people can just guess. Now, I think there's it's overdone right now and I think everyone is going uh, mixed family. So it just seems like it's, it's, it's applying to no one. Um, but you could go mixed family and then in the A plus page, you know, you could show that your company is diverse or that you care about diversity in your company, which goes to show the same messaging as this is the company I'm buying it from and they have a diverse team. Um, so I feel like it's okay. Now, what you're trying to sell is you're, you're not really selling. I know, I know the keyword base is really what people think about. Um, but you're not really selling that the game, in my opinion, the game, uh, helps them learn that's a side benefit that's like benefit number six okay it helps them learn maybe it's a stem learning toy maybe it's etc they want to make learning fun that's a side benefit and there might be some customers that come in for that but i would assume that the main benefit of a parent buying a conversation starter or a family game is about creating uh they don't have much to talk about uh, and so they are trying to create something for the family to focus on that brings them together and creates that family element of spending time together, uh, bonding over competition or uh, over like having something to learn and do. And so you're trying to sell to uh, the mom or dad, probably not even the grandparents, probably the mom or dad um, around something to help them cultivate an environment uh, uh, for family time. Yeah. And, and 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 fun and educational and learning are the side benefits yeah yeah it's true it's uh, it's all about i mean at the end of the day you want to show the people a picture that shows them having fun using the product themselves Mm -hmm. so of course in order for that to happen they have to connect with what's in the picture so and what would be their uh, nose? 
what would be their nose? Their nose might be too hard to learn a new game. Uh, it might be that it's like not fun and their teenage daughter is not going to enjoy it. Uh, it could be that um, the price point. Uh, it could be that like, you know, it's not as good as the photos say, thus the reviews. It could be um, that it's only good like for 15 minutes. And so the value is not there. I want to know that I can spend a couple hours having fun with my family and not be done with it. Um, these are all of like, to me, the no's that could come up with someone looking at the product. But what you're first selling is that emotion of, I want to remember, I want to buy a game that makes me remember the best times with my family laughing and having fun and spending time together. And is this the game that will do that? Yeah. Blah, 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 so blah. Let's uh, quickly cover how you measure the success of this. So I guess it's an obvious question is the conversion rate. So your conversion rate goes up if you're doing a good job, right? That's the bottom line. Yes, there's a lot of different factors, right? So uh, click-through rate, conversion, like, you know, it could be like you solved one piece of it, but haven't nailed all of it. Or like, so we're getting them to click in and come through, but once they get there, the images or something isn't making them say yes. So we're doing great from the ads and the first image and the keywords, uh, but once they get in there, something's not resonating or, um, you know, any number of things. So you're looking at a lot of different variables, I think, uh, when you're trying to really nail it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you track the conversion rate? So, you know, that's session percentage. Uh, you know, you're looking at sessions and you're looking at session conversion percentage over time. Um, you know, different ASINs uh, convert different. Where is the source? Where do you go for that? Business reports. Business reports. Okay. So uh, I want... So I, I want to see your take on... Because as you know, you know, you go to business reports... Uh, you have to download them. You have to put in the start date and the end date. So uh, I always tell, you know, my passion happens to be data and analytics. So I always tell people, guys, go download the business reports, take a look at your conversion rate. But I want you to know it means nothing, zero, unless you look at it in perspective. So would you agree with that? And what is your perspective? KPIs are all subjective. You know, every KPI is subjective to what mission we're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, so some people just care about ACOS to the point where they're going to die on their sword over ACOS and they have no idea what the retention rate is, their customer return rate is. They have no idea about uh, their actual tacos or profitability or their cost of acquiring a new customer. And so it's it's irrelevant. Uh, yeah. You know, as you get better at business and better at Amazon business, you understand that all the KPIs are relative. Are we trying to go out there and get new data uh, through ads and really figure out all of the different kinds of customer buckets we have and then dial in on the best two buckets or something like that? Because sure, we can sell to eight different, but I'd rather go really hard and all in on two great buckets customers let's say for example right so some some cases you're like let's go get tons of data and figure out what's going on and then you have the differences in ads right where a headline ad versus a product ad versus a display ad versus a video ad all get different customers at different parts in their journey is it customer engagement is it customer nurturing is it at the conversion level is you know it just gets very very complicated yeah. even on the advertising side right um but I, I, I'm with you. I started as a data guy. I'm a computer science major, uh, degree in networking and security. Uh, I started out in PPC, um, speaking on PPC and really pushing PPC in the early days. And I've just um, kind of made my way. We're talking about content and emotional content today. But please don't don't mistake this for for me not thinking that I'm a data guy. I'm very much driven by the data. And it's been several times where I got 48% conversion rates on listings or something like this with brands that no one knows about, uh, where I was just like, wow, what did we get right, guys? Let's reverse engineer this. Let's study this. We got something right with the messaging. We got something right with the photos. We got something right with the keywords. I want to be able to do this every time. And, you know, kind of digging in. It was the data that really made us pay attention. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I always say is when you're looking at data, make sure you're looking at historical data. So uh, that's what I was getting at when I said perspective. It's, you know, you download that business report with a from two dates you're looking at a time frame but and that gives you one number so but what is that in the in the previous periods and it has to be the same so i always say when you're looking at data 
especially business reports. Uh, you always want to download that report for the same time frame at the same time uh, at the same time on a regular basis and then compare those and put in the context of the events. You're exactly right. Uh, if you started a PPC campaign and your conversion rate took a nose dive, you want to know that the time period that you're looking at corresponds with the, the campaign start date. Or you're not. right. You're right. There's uh, so many, there's so many influences, Nick, like from, uh, I've worked with brands, you know, that are running great D to C programs and they've got, they run a serious FM announcement or they run a, uh, uh, a Facebook ad, right. Two different things. One serious FM is a radio station, right? Like a big radio ad. And people are going to come to Amazon. They're going to type in the branded name and they're going to buy it. And your conversion rate is going to skyrocket. Why? Because right. they're coming in under a branded term and making a decision based on some top of funnel branding. If you're not paying attention to what's happening off Amazon with the, the client you're working with or the brand, you don't know. On the same instance, someone's driving a Facebook ad. They drive 5,000 new visitors to your Amazon listing because everyone knows off Amazon traffic helps convert and it's so great. Well, imagine you're driving 5,000 customers and um, five of them convert. or uh, So you see sales go up. Uh, you don't know how many, how much it was, but your conversion rate is going to tank. Your overall listing after that is going to suffer because Amazon just saw your conversion rate tank and Amazon really cares about conversion rate and customer success. So you've messed up your whole system. So all of this, you know, all of the testing has to be done in a stable environment where you're not changing everything else. You're not changing price. You're not ch adding new campaigns. You're not running out of yeah. stock on your best color. Uh, you know, let's say like uh, black converts at 25% and blue converts at 13%. And all of a sudden, black goes out of stock. Well, that, you're going to drop 6% immediately because you went to a 13% converting listing versus a 19% converting listing as an example, yeah. you know, so it's, well, it's all about keeping things thing. stable. Yeah, you want to track a child skew level as well. Yeah, you, you, you don't want parent. Yeah, this is great. I mean, we can talk about this all day long. And it will still not be just uh, any more than scratching the surface. So I love this kind of conversation. So, uh, but enough of business talk. Let's uh, get to know you a little bit. So tell us uh, wh where are you based and where do you live? I am uh, I'm currently living in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I've been here since uh, about 2007 and I've called this home. So you know, I travel to New York and Miami, the coast quite a bit, uh, just for Amazon events and conferences and things like that. I love to travel, like we mentioned earlier in my intro, and uh, being centrally located, one, family's here, so I've just, uh, I figured, uh, try to be a, a big fish in a small pond and kind of try to make a splash here, so to speak, um, and it's very, like, cost of living is very low, and I'm centrally located, so traveling, uh, you know, I'm kind of in the middle of everywhere, and uh, where did you grow up? I actually, uh, this is a this is a loaded question, Nick. Uh, I was I was born in Montreal and then uh, raised in various parts of Africa and Russia um, until I was sixteen. I came back from Congo uh, in two thousand one, December of two thousand one. So, you know, I mean, I, I I know I know that about you. That's why I asked the question because I want to connect that to something else i don't know uh, i don't know if this is accurate but having lived in totally different cultures you've been exposed to totally different set of emotions people react to different things so i'm wondering if your focus on emotional content or emotional appeal is the result of your experience with dealing with those different emotions, you understand the outcome you can have from those. Uh, is that is that kind of close or I, very, very very much so? I think um, you know we all we all are our story, right? And um, I try to share my story just to to open it up for anyone else to share theirs because I think that's where a lot of learning and inspiration can come from is is really understanding where someone comes from. Um, I do think it makes me uh, have a bigger grasp and perspective of, of different ways of thinking, you know, something that might be considered, um, let's say, like, acceptable here is considered disrespectful somewhere else, 
uh and you know something sexual here is not sexual there and you can have nude beaches it's no problem and here it's oh no 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 that would never happen and so you start to understand that there's no difference between us we're all the same we're all human uh but yet depending on our beliefs and our religions and where we're raised things can change quite a bit and i'm just someone that's bootstrapped from the bottom I'm, i come from the mud you know i'm the first to get a college degree first male to get a college degree in my family um and like you know uh started in debt even when i built my business and, and didn't really know much about business i uh, have just really learned along the way and um one thing i'm good at is is uh i have a lot of i could focus on a lot of negative things about my life okay uh you know like just heartbreak and upbringing and not getting on like be more victim mindset instead like I was wired a little bit different maybe because of Africa I'm not sure but I started thinking you know when everyone in the Amazon space is afraid they're fear 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 oh my god China oh my god Amazon's gonna get rid of me oh my god well I wasn't doing review giveaways I wasn't doing super URL hacks I was instead studying on the how was Amazon built by the people that made it and why did they make it that way? And I'm going to lean into that so that I don't get in trouble so I can continue to succeed. And so, you know, they put out things like Amazon posts and Amazon live, a couple other areas where content can exist. And why is Amazon putting out all these things? Oh, professional curiosity would push me in, push me in, push me in. And, um, you know, I really just started thinking at, okay, so China has supply chain and China has price. What do I have? And by me, I mean the brands I'm working for. I said, well, what do I have? Well, I have experience that they will never have. I have uh, access in the middle of the country that no one else has. Uh, I'm an American. I'm an American Canadian. I'm, I'm a dual citizen. So as far as uh, you know, Western experience goes, I've got hundreds of thousands of hours on, on, on a Chinese seller. Um, and so I really started just focusing on strengths that we had. Uh, instead of like the things that we didn't have, like pricing or things like that, right? And um, in other ways, like focused on manufacturers in the US and other advantages too. But I, for me, more so it was going in on, uh, I'm also a very creative person. I used to be a musician, like, you know, Africa is very vibrant and fun and loud, like you said. And uh, I just have I had an interesting upbringing. To me, these things have all kind of curated who I am as a person. I'm a creative person. Um, so lean into those strengths, lean into uh, storytelling, lean into, um, you know, what makes Americans tick kind of thing. Uh, that's the one advantage you're going to have over a Chinese seller um, that hasn't lived here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so true. Leaning into your strength is always a winner. Uh, it may not be the easiest thing to do, and but that's definitely a winner. This is great, Drew. So share with us your contact information. How can people reach you? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn uh, professionally, like Andrew Morgans or Marknology. Uh, I try to put out, you know, content there. Personally, I'm on Instagram at Andrew Morgans. Um, I've got a YouTube channel, uh, marknology.com. That's M-A-R-K-N-O-L-O-G-Y.com. Um, name the company Marknology. Just I think e-commerce sits in the middle of uh, marketing and technology. We need a little bit of art and a little bit of data, you know, a little bit of art, a little bit of science. I think that's the secret sauce, um, you know, using partners, like you said, how do you test this? Well, partners like PicFu and partners like these survey companies where you can get people's feedback on your images and the stuff you're making and saying, hey, what does this make you feel? Or, hey, what is this selling to you? So, um, you know, marknology.com for contact. Um, love chatting with people that care about, you know, the the e-commerce industry, the Amazon industry. I've devoted uh, 11 years of my life to this. I'm absolutely passionate about uh, storytelling and brand building. And um, I've also got a podcast, Start a Puzzle Podcast. I uh, hope to have you on as well, Nick. Uh, we'll get to your story and I'll be on the other side of the microphone asking the questions. Um, but uh, would love, you know, if I put out free content every Tuesday um, interviewing some of the sharpest minds, uh, you know, it, not just in e-commerce and Amazon, but uh, entrepreneurs in general. It's one of my favorite things that I do each week. Um, yeah, I, I, that was a mouthful, but I uh, appreciate anyone that's tuned in this this long to, to listen to me, uh, to, you know, talk about branding, talk about content. Yeah, great. Yeah. So we will put your contact information uh, together with your episode on our website. And then, uh, you know, people can reach out to you and uh, this was very valuable, totally different perspective. And uh, thank you for being here today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And this brings us to the end of another episode. And I'll see you on the next one. 
Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. Be sure and subscribe, rate, and review our show. And be sure and share an episode with a friend. And thank you so much for being with us today. We'll see you next week here on Amazon Legends. <laughs>